Dave Willits, uh, a Brummy, I think, by birth, but definitely an adopted Coventry kid for many years. Absolutely, yeah, a, a, a Brummy, as you say. Uh, but um, Lynn, my wife, comes from Coventry, and mm -hmm. we've lived in Coventry for, gosh, many, many years. So I consider myself an adopted Coventrian. As one born and bred, can I welcome you? Thank uh, you so much, Rod. <laughs> um, you were recently described to me <clears throat> um, uh, by no lesser personage than the, the editor of Sardines magazine, Paul Johnson, as, quote, one in a million, unquote, because you, uh, I think that's understating it personally, because you, you, you actually kind of lived the dream. You went from an amateur on the Priory stage in Kenilworth, just down the road from, from Coventry, and ended up as, 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 as the star of West End shows, plural. Just tell us how it happened. It's, it's, a, it's a, do you know something? It's one of those things that until we do something like this and you talk about it, then you, uh, it's just been part of my life. But when you do look back and you talk about it, you wouldn't write a show about this one because people people wouldn't believe you. And uh, I I like loads and loads of other people. I left school and I went and did an engineering apprenticeship. Uh, I became an engineer. I eventually became a manager in an engineering company, uh, company car, Bupa membership. Uh, travel all over the world, sorting problems and, and a, a good salary. Uh, and life was kind of good, you know. And, uh, and Lynn, my wife, uh, we had a good life. Uh, we had two children, Leanne and Kerry. And uh, for my pleasure and my, my own entertainment, I uh, sang with a dance band, um, the Jeff Goff Big Band. Uh, but I eventually, somehow or other, got involved in the world of amateur dramatics. And this happened when I was uh, kind of, when I did my first year, year of my apprenticeship. Um, I was down in Attitude in Wales. And two friends of mine, who I'd, I'd only ever seen up to their elbows in, in grease and muck and bullets and all of that, uh, they said, Dave, 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 we're doing, we're doing a show called No, No, Nanette, and we can't give the tickets away. Do you want some? And I said, A, never been to the theatre in my life. B, never heard of No, No, Nanette, but I'll come and have a look. And we went, and uh, Ray and John came out of the wings in the top hat and tails, doing all the business. And I thought, this is fantastic, right? And the thing that swung it for me was they said, Actually, after every rehearsal or not, we go down to the pub and it's a good social. So I thought, okay, that's okay. We'll have a little, we'll have a little go of that. And kind of coming forward a little bit, uh, I, I, as you say, did a show at the Priory Theatre called uh, Charlie and Algernon, uh, which was a fan, fantastic show. And as it happened, I got really good reviews. And Peter McGarry from the then Coventry Evening Telegraph uh, came to see the show and gave a good review and, uh, and actually then spoke to Bob Hamlin, who was then the artistic director of the Belgrade Theatre. And uh, Peter said, you've got to go and see this guy in this show before it closes. And Bob did. And... Uh, he gave me the chance to audition for their forthcoming production of Annie. I went along to the audition and I took along with me uh, a white mouse, a top hat and a cane. And I did one of the songs from the show, Charlie and Algernon. And word must have got around that this, this bloke, this is bloke auditioning with a white mouse. And, and, and all, it, and all a real white mouse? Yeah, 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 a real white mouse. Real white... I, I trained it, I trained it to run up the cane, to run across my shoulders, down the other side, onto the top hat, run around the brim of the top hat, and end up, we had a little chat with each other. And Dave, word, Dave you're word... pulling my here, aren't you? You're no, like... no, 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 honestly, Rod, honestly, Rod, because I, 
I thought, well, what do you do at these auditions? I had no idea. So I went and I did this and word must have got around that this is bloke, you know, and a white mouse. And it, I could see in the auditorium, eventually the cleaners were coming in and the, and the front to house staff and to, to see what was happening. <laughs> anyway, cut a long story short, God bless him, Bob Hamley, Bob Hamlin uh, offered me, I think it was third flunky in the chorus of Annie. Um, and just, and just to inject here, Dave, the Belgrade is a professional theatre. So yes. you moved from the amateur world to the professional world in that movie. Yeah, to the professional world. And, uh, and he actually, uh, you know, tried to talk me out of it, really, because he said, you know, you've got a good job and you've got kids and, uh, you know, it's a very precarious business. Uh, but Lynn and I, we, we had a chat and we gave ourselves three years just for me to stay in work. Um, and uh, again, cutting a long story short, um, I, I left my company car, my secretary, my pupa membership, my worldwide travel, left it all on a, on a Friday afternoon and started rehearsals for Annie in a church hall in Coventry on the Monday. And, uh, and 12 months on from that, I saw, uh, I was offered uh, the, the Bob Hamlin's next production, production was uh, South Pacific. And he offered me a part again in the chorus. And, um, but in the meantime, I'd been to uh, an open audition for Les Miserables. Now an open audition is a bit like the cheese counter at Sainsbury's. You take your ticket and then you're called, your, your name is called or your number is called. Um, so uh, I, I kind of did all this and, 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 and went along and I did my bit. And, uh, and then I got a recall for Les Mis. Um, and no one knew what this was at the time, the, 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 you know, the show that it was eventually turned out to be. And uh, I went along to the, and it was at the Astoria Theatre, I never, which is now, it, it's now a, a Tottenham Court Road tube station. Um, but I went along and there was Trevor Nunn, John Caird, uh, Claude Michel Schoenberg, Alain Bluebeal, all of them. The authors. The, the creators the authors. of Les Mis, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, and um, again, uh, you know, this is all new to me. I didn't know really what I had to do. And uh, I went along and, uh, and Trevor came up. Hi, hi Dave, he said, what, what are you going to sing for us? And the only song kind of I really knew or was confident, I, th I, said, I said, I'll do Lock Be A Lady from Guys and Dolls. So I did Lock Be A Lady. <clears throat> and then he said, uh, and Trevor came up. He said, oh, that was great, Dave. He said, uh, I wonder if you could sing this for us. And he gave me a sheet of music. And I thought, well, in for, in for a penny, in for a pound. I said, I have no idea what this says. I can't read music, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And I thought, oh, that's it, that's blown it. And Trevor said, oh, never mind. He said, come, come down here. He said, uh, we'll get around the piano. And Martin Koch, the MD, um, started playing the soliloquy uh, from Les Mis. Now, I don't know if anybody knows the soliloquy, um, but it's a big, big end of act of scene one, um, oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but it all comes uh, together. It, uh, yeah, and, and, and it, was, it was a case of, uh, you, if you don't read music, what I've found over the years, if you don't read music, you have a good ear to pick things up. So Martin played it and Trevor said, oh, do you want to do that again? I said, no, 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 let me do it, let me do it now while, while I remember it. And it was the, it was the bit that went, um, take an eye for an eye, turn your heart into stone. This is all I have lived for. This is all I have known. It was that piece. And I did it and I didn't. I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. I remembered it. And, uh, and Trevor Nunn kind of walked me back. And, and in the business, I got what we called nunnified. 
he put his arm around the shoulder. He said, that was great, Dave, he said, but uh, and, and we'll, we'll let you know. And blow me, uh, you know, I had a phone call the next day and I was in the, in the original cast of, of Les Mis. You were, you were in the original cast of Les Mis, but you, yep. were, uh, you weren't playing the lead. You weren't playing no, the No, 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 I was playing a character, a character called Prujon and understudying uh, Jean Valjean. Uh, and then when uh, Colm left uh, the show, I took over uh, the lead role of Jean Valjean. Mm. Um, uh, when I did that for 12 months and I, and I, and I went to Australia, I did it in Australia. Um, and uh, it's been a part of my life for many, many years. But Lord Lloyd Webber must have headhunted you to go and play the lead in Phantom because you because you because you, you you went straight into the, didn't you follow Michael Crawford into yeah because I Phantom. went when when I was doing Les Mis uh, Phantom had opened and Michael was doing um, the Phantom while I was doing Jean Valjean and uh, Michael was going to leave um, but it, it was a case of uh, it, it was such such a, a prestigious role. The Phantom. It, it had created so much hype um, mm. that they they auditioned for the uh, the role of Phantom, and I was asked to go on audition. Now I've got to tell you, I was the only person I'd never heard of at these auditions, and uh, it, it was a case of um, we had to do uh, music of the night, the song music of the night. And the one thing I had learned about this business is that nobody gives you anything because they like you. you. They give you the role and you get the parts because you're capable and you can, you can keep the shows going. You can keep the standard going in the shows. So what I thought was that you can't, you have three minutes in an audition, you have three minutes to show the, the panel and to show Andrew Lloyd Webber and Hal Prince uh, uh, and all these people that you are the person for the role. And I thought the only way you can do that is you can't do it by reading the sheet music or the lyrics, you've got to learn it. So I learned music of the night and acted it out as best I can because the other thing you learn about musicals is the best people for musicals are actors, not singers. Um, they, are, they are actors who can sing, not singers who can act a bit. So I did my little bit of acting with, with this song. And, uh, and it was just like the films, a voice from the back of the auditorium in the darkness said, okay, Dave, uh, if you could just hang on there a minute, uh, I'm coming down. And it was Hal Prince, the director. And he said, okay, Dave, he said, uh, we, we, we've got a scene here. We, we're going to play out this scene. And uh, what, what he was trying, I think, to, to gain was whether I could take direction and do things in certain ways and different ways. Uh, and so we did, we did one of the scenes in three or four different ways. And, uh, and it was a case of that, that dreaded at the end of auditions, Okay, Dave, we'll let you know. And uh, so I went, I went home and I thought, well, you know, there's all these names that I'd heard of. Um, so, but it was a good experience. And lo and behold, a couple of days later, my agent rang. She said, do you want the good news or the bad news? And I said, uh, well, I'll have the good news first. She said, you're the next phantom. And I said, well, what's the bad news? She said, you can't tell anybody. So, so the first thing I did was, well, if I can't tell anybody, I'll ring my mom. She can tell them. So, 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 so I rang, I rang my mom, and uh, uh, and and that's how it came about. And and uh, as I say, I've been lucky enough to stay and work and done some great shows and and travel the world uh, in the last 39, 40 years. And you are still working. You were in the studio last week, weren't you? What were I you was. doing? I was in the studio, yeah. The, the other thing I do, which I've done for the last, I think, seven or eight years, um, I got involved with the Alzheimer's Society. Um, and seven years ago, I saw a programme 
uh, about how much music is beneficial to people who are living with dementia. And I came across that the Alzheimer's Society uh, offer a national, na nationwide service called Singing for the Brain. So I rang them up and I said, oh, I'd like to volunteer for Coventry's Singing for the Brain. And they said, oh, we haven't got one uh, in Coventry. So I thought, well, that's a bit daft, really. What are we, the sixth, seventh, eighth biggest city in the country? We should have one. So seven, cut a long story short, seven years ago, I set it up. And uh, before, before COVID took over, uh, we met every Monday and we were the biggest attended uh, session in the country. And the benefit is, is enormous. And, you know, people have shuffled in and they fly out. But the problem with it is, Rod, that the minute they fly out, people sometimes forget where they've been and how much they've enjoyed it. So what I thought, how can I prolong that? And I thought the only way that I can do it is to do albums. And so I embarked on a, um, a recording session series of what I call memories albums. And the one that I was doing last week was the third in a series. And all, all the proceeds um, go to a, a foundation which I've set up um, which helps uh, people who are living with dementia through music. And that's what I was doing last week. So not only uh, do you do your work with the Alzheimer's Society, but you are also patron of Side by Side, the Side by Side Theatre Company of Levington Spa, for benefit of anyone who doesn't know or people who don't know. That's uh, an access theatre group where, where uh, members some of whom are living with disability, perform alongside other members who are not. Um, yeah. Our patron of that and religiously turn up to the show every November at the Spa Centre in Leamington Spa, because I've seen you there. And I've oh, right. <laughs> seen the look on your face. I mean, it's the same as the look on everybody's face. It's just wonderful. Tell, tell us about Side by Side. Rod, it's the best piece of theatre anybody will ever go to. It is amazing. When, when they, they asked me to be patron and um, I kind of jumped at the chance and I'm, I'm, pay, I'm involved in, in quite a few of these things and, but sometimes uh, you can't get to places but so you, you're kind of patron or whatever in, in name, you know? But the one thing that I try to get to, as you say, every November, is the production of Side by Side. And it's, there must be, gosh, 50, 60 in the cast, something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and it, it's, it, it's just an amazing experience. It's, a, it's an amazing, humbling experience to see what people can achieve, you know? And as you say, it's people who are living with disabilities of various kinds, working together with uh, people who haven't got disabilities and the camaraderie and the friendship that this creates uh, on the stage. I've never known anything come across to an audience in such a way that that does. Uh, and the, the, the highlight is, it, for me, is when we're all up on stage and we get a partner. Uh, oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we travel along singing a song side by side. And we all walk around. The, the audience are still in their seats, are waving, the cheer. Honestly, I've got tingles now talking about it. Me too. Uh, uh, it's an absolutely fantastic piece of theatre and, and social, the way, the way that we should all interact socially. I, I agree. And of course, one of the tragedies of, 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 this, um, of, of this COVID year is that side by side would have performed 
as part of the main run, as part of the main event, not in a yeah. studio somewhere, not in the afternoon, but a part of the evening performance. And but the thing, the thing is, Rod, side by side aren't going anywhere. They're not, you know, they're not going anywhere. They'll still be here when we all feel comfortable enough to do these things. And at, at this moment in time, I really do feel that erring on the side of caution is, is the way ahead. Uh, I really do. Um, if for me, even for the rest of this year, but you know, it's, it's like the, the lame is masterclass that we were going to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy those masterclasses and I think it's a fantastic thing to see people coming together and having a little bit of an insight into, into what, you know, Les Mis was and still is uh, and how you got into it and, and all that. But, you know, on, on, on July the 19th, when everybody is saying, no, you're still two metre distance, still wear a mask, you can only have six people indoors, uh, and there's no singing, there's, you can go to a wedding, but you can't dance, you can't sing. Then all of a sudden, two days later, it's going to be, hey, everybody, off you go. You can all do what you want to do. I, I, don't, I don't buy into that, Rod. Uh, and especially with the Lame Miss Masterclass, where we could possibly be having um, people coming from all parts of the country, from all different uh, social settings from all different societies all coming together in one room indoors and with the Les Mis masterclass you're standing this close together you're singing at each other I I you know made a, a decision that I don't feel comfortable in doing that what you were offering to do was to um, uh, to uh, audition people and show them how a West End audition looks and feels like. Um, yeah. It would be a wonderful experience for, for someone working in musical theatre, you know, locally. Yeah, this is what it feels like to do, to pitch for a role on a West End stage and then moving on through into a sort of, uh, forgive the shorthand, but a kind of plain a day format. Where, where a kind of production is, is put together at the yeah. end of the day. We can't afford, sorry, we can't avoid that. For some reason, Dave, we just can't avoid that title, can we? Anyway, no. at the end of the day, um, uh, it, it's, so, it, it, it's a production, you know, um, uh, whatever, that, that friends and family could then come in, having been banned from the rehearsals, but could then come in and see. So that was the plan. Um, that was uh, the plan, yeah. It, it, was gonna, it was gonna be, as you say, a whole day. Um, uh, I'd I got uh, one of West End's um, best MDs, a friend of mine called Joe Bunker. He was gonna come along, he was gonna MD it. <clears throat> we were going to do um, a, a, a sits probe situation. We were gonna do an audition situation. And then we would put together, um, and, and I'd, I'd got uh, 70, 70 odd pages of a booklet which I put together of all the music and a potted, a potted little version of Les Mis. Uh, and then at 4.30 in the afternoon, that all the family and friends or whoever wanted would come and see what, what these people had achieved. Um, but as, as you say, Rod, the same as side by side, you know, my 70 page booklet's going to be there in 10 years' time. Something yeah, well, going in there. Yeah, 12 months will do, mate. 12 yeah, months will that'll do. do. We, we, we will get this. We will get this now. We were, it's just, it's just so much breathtaking fun to, to, to kind of to contemplate and too good to miss. Um, but you will be with us at the Albany uh, on the 24th, on the, the Saturday. Yeah. You're presenting the prizes on stage. So, People will, uh, groups will compete all week in, in various um, uh, categories of youth, one act plays, uh, one act, uh, 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 and full length plays, and, and the adjudicator gives 
hears in this case uh, adjudication and decides who the winners of various categories are and you'll be up there in your familiar in your familiar situation on stage in the spotlight yeah. handing, handing, out the handing out the prizes yeah no i'm i'm just so glad because i I mean, when I, when I did, made the decision not to do that, it was really with a heavy heart yeah. uh, about that because you know I didn't I didn't want to wait until July the nineteenth, else that gives nobody chance to you know take anything in. So it was with a heavy heart that I made the decision, but it's with an equally glad heart that uh, I'm there giving out the prizes to all, all the worthy winners. As, as, as part of the, um, the week-long National Drama Festivals Association's um, f- festival, um, there is a conference on inclusion and diversity taking place in the Albany studio on, on the Saturday all day. And these are topics on which you feel strongly, are they not? Oh, I, I, I just think you could, should concern everybody. It's not just it's not just in our in in the theatre business. It should be something that concerns everybody, you know. And I think we're all very um, quick to judge and and to make opinions without even knowing anything about anything, you know. And and I I, don't, I just think the more we can um, talk to people, the more we can find out about things, uh, the better it is for everybody. And and it's like side by it's like side by side, and and the uh, the singing for the brain with the dementia, you'd be surprised at what people can do. You uh, that that there there should be inclusion in everything, um, and I'm I'm not saying in, inclusion for inclusion's sake. Uh, I don't think that is the way to do it. But I think what you've got to have is inclusion when it's, when it's totally, totally appropriate to have it, you know? Uh, and I think we should all be working to that aim. That's, that's the, it, but it shouldn't be just a, a theatrical person's um, a domain. It should, be, it should be everybody. We should be thinking of, of inclusion and diversity. Dave, uh, uh, you're a, a proud adopted son of Coventry, and I can tell you that Coventry is very proud of you, of, of, of what well, you are and, and who you are. So it's going to be our privilege to have you with us um, at the Albany for the prize giving. Uh, and you may or may not pop in during the week. You'd be very welcome. And then, you know, next year, whatever's happening, whatever's going on, we're going to get this Les Mis masterclass sorted out and uh, and and side by side of which you're a patron and and pick it up from there. Yeah, you know, Rod, I mean, the Les, Mis, the Les Mis masterclass doesn't have to be part of a bigger thing. It can be a, if 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 you've got if we've got a time when we can all just get together on on one weekend, let's just do it. You know, it doesn't have to be. We don't have to wait for anything. When we can do it, let's do it. All right, we'll do it. All right, mate, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, My pleasure, mate. Right, good to see you. Take care, buddy. See you, bye-bye.